Okay, if you'd like to turn off your microphones, I think that would be a good idea. Welcome, welcome everyone to our yoga class. This morning we're focusing on the sixth chakra, but we might just include the seventh as well because basically they're sort of beyond the physical realm, the, the manifest realm of the world, and we're venturing into the spiritual realm of our being. So there are fewer asana practices that are relevant. It's more about um, meditation. So let's begin. Um, come to standing with your chair handy. So I'm going to just place my hand for support on the chair back and I'm going to limber up with some movements of hip joint. So standing on one leg, bring the other leg forward and back, swinging loose. So aiming to be reaching up tall through the crown of the head and focusing your mind on the feeling, the sensations across the back of the pelvis into the front of the thigh and the back of the thigh and hopefully a free moving action. And then change over to the other side. And observe whether, oh, it's easier to move this side or it's easier to stand upright on this leg. So quite often we have a difference in our um, strength and stability around the hips. And see if it's possible to gradually increase the range of the movement. And then we'll swap over again, go back to the first side and we're going to change the movement. I'll add, um, first of all, lift the knee in the front. So bend the knee and lift it up in front and then swing your knee out to the side and then drop the knee down and draw the leg back, lift to the front and take it across the midline and go out to the side, back behind the trunk and come in front again. So try that again across the midline, then outwards to the side and then back behind the trunk and forward and change over again. So do the same sort of thing. Lift forward and across the midline, sideways, back behind. Keep going, moving through those, the range of motion. Here comes Ilsa to join us. Ilsa, we're standing up with a chair and moving the hip joints. So lift one knee, take it across the midline, swing out to the side, and then drop back and take the leg behind. And then both feet on the floor, jiggle, shake your hips, heels pounding, flop the wrists, roll the shoulders, every wriggly sort of movement that you can do. And then come across to the first side and we're going, I'm going to call out and they might be sort of in a different order, these instructions. So lifting the leg to the front, go back behind and front, out to the side, back behind, across the midline, out to the side. Across the midline, 
out to the side and bring your toes down in a tree pose. So your toes are folded, your heel is resting on your instep. Take both arms up. So release the chair, lengthen up very tall. And then release the arms down and we change over. So take your chair across. So we'll do the movements with the support of the chair and then we'll come into a balance. So across the midline, to the front, then to the back and across the midline again, to the side and across the midline and side and back. the midline, out to the side, back behind and front. Lift that knee as high as you can, release the chair and then bring your the ball of your foot on the floor with your heel resting on the shin or the instep. So the toes are flattened on the floor and you're in a steady balance in a tree pose. And see if you can make the upper branches lighter, your trunk longer. Release the arms down. Both feet on the floor. Circle, circle. So circle your hips around, jiggle your heels, any sort of um, limbering movement to shake and loosen the whole body. Hands on the hips, circle the hips around now. So big loose circles. And change to the opposite direction. And come to stand. I'm just going to look straight ahead. And imagine that, that you have a dot on the middle of your chin and a dot on each of your shoulders. We're going to take a breath in here and then bring the dot on your chin down and across towards one shoulder. And then lift your chin so your chin is level. And exhale, drop your chin down towards the other dot. Slowly in this way, exploring the range of movement that you have with this neck rotation. And inhaling as you move to the center, exhaling towards one side. And thinking that in an ideal situation, your chin would be just about above the shoulder. So are you able to stand up a little more erect, taller, bringing the chin as close as possible to the shoulder? So lifting chin level, inhaling, exhaling to one side and lifting chin level, exhale to the other side and come back, pause and see how you feel. And then for a moment, we're going to sit down on the chair and think about Agya Chakra. So we're in our exploration of the chakras where um, we've ascended from the base. We were sitting, Mulatar at the base of the spine and gradually 
thought about aspects of our physiology and our mind and our mental and emotional being coming up through each point in turn. So now we've reached the third eye center. So the kshetram, the, the concentration point is right here between the eyebrows, but the center itself is internal in the head. So back behind this point. And in the uh, text, it's spelled A-J-N-A, -A, but it's pronounced more like Agnya, uh, with a G sort of hard G sound, Agnya or Agnya. Um, and it's known as the command center. Agnya chakra is beyond the physical realm of you know, the manifest world and our structure and processes. So we're moving beyond the elements and coming now to the mind. So really the element associated with Agya Chakra is the mind. Um, I sent you a couple of different images. One represents um, like a shorthand form of the chakra with just two silvery white petals. And so we've, we've moved beyond um, associating with an animal. We've moved beyond associating um, with geometric forms. And the two petals represent para and apara. Para is um, everything that we, we understand about the physical world. Why don't I get, make sure I get this right? Para, represented by one of those silvery petals, represents the knowledge of everything in the spiritual realm. Oh. Apara, knowledge of everything in the physical realm. So at this eyebrow center, a spiritual realm understanding and uh, the understanding of the physical realm, everything around us, the universe merges together or can unite together. So it's... um. It, we're moving into higher, more subtle uh, realms of existence when we consider Agya Chakra. The deity image that I sent you, um, I'll show you the one in the book which we're, um, we've, I've been taking the um, images from, this book by Harish Johari. So this one is a lot more complicated. It shows the male deity in the background, just a single tall figure. And he is half masculine, half feminine. So this guy, this representation is called Ada Narishwara. Um, Ada means half. So he's half masculine, half feminine. And then there are a whole lot of this, an extra six female deities so we've added a new concept above and beyond the five in um, Vishuddha chakra and basically a lot of representations of Ag Agya chakra omit this sort of complicated um, deity symbol just because it's I don't know because it's so complicated and focus on the idea of the coming together of um, the opposites the coming together of masculine and feminine. So um, opposites merge in this eyebrow center, opposites, not just of gender, but opposites of light and dark, night and day, hot and cold. So it's a very, it's a chakra that is very symbolic for meditation. When we reach that still quiet, um, settled totally settled still point in our meditation and you know ideas of of you know what's outside what the troubles are what the alarming circumstances in our world they seem to fade into the background and we just come to this still point where everything merges into harmony that'd be good um we can do a few movements and certainly Focus a lot on chanting Om. So sitting upright in your chair, just imagine that, um, you might have done this before, um, imagine a hollow tube from the crown of your head 
all the way down to the base of your pelvic floor. So visualizing running up through the center of your spine, a hollow tube. Just let your shoulders relax. And visualize that as you inhale, life force is being, being drawn up from the pelvic floor and bring it up to the level of your eyebrow center, the third eye in your, um, in your head. And as you exhale, allow the prana to sink back down through that hollow tube, back to the base of the spine. So it's as though you're clearing, you're freeing of obstacles. The hollow tube, maybe it's of bamboo, maybe it's you know something supple. As you inhale, draw life force from the earth up, from starting at the pelvic floor moving up to the third eye center and exhaling, let the flow come back down to the base of the pelvic floor. Take your time. And then next, Take the flow all the way up to the crown or even just above the crown of the head. The seventh chakra is thought to be just beyond the crown of the head. And again, there's no real, very few asana practices that relate specifically. So think of drawing the life force past each of the chakras, through each chakra, through the third eye, up to the top of your head, and then exhaling, let it flow down again. And each breath clears the pathway, frees any obstacles. And we can think of each of the chakras as the breath passes in turn. So let's start together at the base at Mulatar and then coming up Svadhasthan, Navel, Manipur, Heart Center, Vishuddha at the throat, Agya and Sahasrar. And we'll bring the breath down, Sahasrar, Agya, Vishuddha at the throat, Anahata, Manipura. Svadhasthan and Mulata. The mantra which resonates, which vibrates this meditation center is the mantra Om. So just sit upright and we'll take three breaths chanting Om. So we're not um, making that lengthy homage to the elements we've moved beyond the elements and so now it's just the mind so we'll just chant om three times on the exhalation so inhale draw the breath up oh. inhale Just sit for a moment, focus on the feeling of vibration at the third eye center. We're going to do that three more chanting, three more times chanting on. So bring your focus right to this third eye point. Let the sound vibrate in your body but keep your attention here at the third eye center. So inhale, draw the life force up. Oh. Oh. 
Sit. Notice the sensations at your third eye. And we'll move down to the mat and take your blocks. Have your block handy. So let me get this right. So we're going to bring a little very gentle pressure to bear on the center, that spot between the eyebrows. So I'm just placing my block at a handy height, which is quite high. For me. I'm going to use the highest, bring my hands either side. And so my head is just barely resting on the block. And I'm just doing very gentle, slow, side to side rocking. So it's really the front corner of my block, which is very lightly pressing. So it may be that um, this is very low for you and you could instead let your forehead rest on the front of the seat of your chair. So if, if that um, position is too low and uncomfortable, An option would be, I'm just going to put something soft over my over the seat of my chair. Slowly, lightly. Adding to the feeling of sensation right there between the eyebrows. And then come up to sit. And just very lightly smooth outwards. So you could be sitting or kneeling and a light massage coming out and over the eyebrows as though you're opening up the center of your forehead. Opening, freeing more space around that third eye center. And let the hands come down, take a breath or two. And then we'll move into um, standing up on the knees. And we'll do our Vajrasana movement. So we're going to inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, clasp the hands behind. Sit back into child pose. Then come forward into tabletop, back of the neck long, and sinking down into child pose. And then reach up, lifting tall, looking up. Bring the arms down, right hand grasping the left wrist. Folding all the way back down to child. Inhale onto all fours. Back of the neck long. Exhale, child pose. We're going to add the mantra each time we exhale. Inhale, stand up tall on your knees. Oh. Inhale into tabletop. Oh. Inhale, stand up on the knees, reach up. Oh. 
Inhale to tabletop. And then come up onto knees. Bring one foot forward and come up to stand. Come into Tadasana. So standing upright, give yourself a shake. And we're going to lift the arms up and lift the heels. Whoa. And bring the arms back down onto the heart. So see if we can coordinate this. We're reaching out, gathering, reaching high and coming to the heart. Next time we're going to bring um, energy and blessings into the crown of the head. So inhale, reach up, look up, look out, and then gently touching down the crown of the head. And next time to the third eye, inhale, lift. Exhale, lightly touching the third eye. And the third time to the heart, inhale. Exhale, coming back down, drop your chin, take a breath. So if you can manage to lift your heels and stay balanced, and we'll do that three times. So first of all, bringing prana life force to the crown of the head and then to the third eye and then to the heart. If, if you can add the heel lift at the same time, bravo. Let's go, inhale, open up tall gathering blessings and bring them to the crown of the head. Drop your chin and sweep around and up. And to the third eye. Drop your chin and sweep around and up. And come to the heart. Drop your chin. Pause there, take a breath. Let the arms drop down. We we'll take a side bend. So tip to one side, look down and release. Tip to the other side, look down and release. Do that one more time. So reaching out and over in a lateral plane. Lift up, following the arm, and then look down. And then release. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel the sensations. Do a big shoulder roll, forward, up, and rolling back. Forward, up, rolling back. And take your feet slightly wider. Turn out the feet just a little in so that we can come into sort of a horse stance, a qigong stance, which is very grounding. So just a bit of a knee bend, bring hands onto your heart. And then we're going to take a breath, sweep up, touch overhead, and then draw your right hand down your left arm to the left side of your chest and look away to the right. And then sliding that right hand up so palms are together overhead. And down the left arm, hand travels down the right arm. And turn your head, look left. And sweep up, left hand travels so palms are together. Bend the knees, bring your palms together behind your back. You might have your fingers pointing up or down. And then inhale all the way up and come back onto the heart. Hands on the heart, squatting down with a little horse stance. So 
using your thigh muscles. Let's do that again. So each time we exhale, we're um, bending the knees and sweeping the arms in different positions. So beginning hands on the heart, looking straight ahead. Take a breath in, sweep up, hands touch overhead. Now left hand travels down the right arm to the right side of your chest. Turn your head, look left with a squat. And then sweeping up that right arm overhead. Bring the right hand down the left arm to the left side of your chest. Turn your head, look right, squat. Sweeping up, palms together overhead and sweep down squatting, bring your palms together behind your back. You might have fingers pointing down or up in a reverse namaskar. And now sweep up overhead, palms together, squatting down, hands on your heart, press your hands on your chest, squat. Let's do all that again. So straighten the legs, sweep up, palms join overhead. Draw your right hand down the left arm to the left side of your chest. Turn your head, look right. Sweep up. Palms together overhead, legs are straight. Squat down, exhale, bring your left hand down to the left, right side of your chest. Turn your head, look left. You squat and straighten and stand up. Palms together, legs strong, and then drop your arms down behind you, palms together behind the back with a squat, pull your belly in, firm the pelvic floor, and then sweeping up overhead again, look up, squat down, place your hands over your center of your chest. Shall we do all that again? So straighten the legs, sweep up, look up. Left hand sliding down the right arm to the right side of your chest. Turn your head away. Squat, firm the belly. Inhale, sweep up overhead. Palms are touching. And then down the left arm to the left side of your chest. Turn your head, look right. Firm the belly. Sweep up overhead again. And now squatting, bring the palms together behind the back, chin to chest, pull the belly in. Feel the solidity, the firmness of your stance, connected to the earth. And then sweep up, joining overhead, look up and squat down, hands on the center of your chest. And just pause there, straighten your legs, drop your arms, see how you feel. So we did quite a bit of sort of concentrating, crossing over the midline, all good for our nervous system. Um, that action of crossing right hand to left side and so on is very good for um, getting good interaction, connection between the, cere cere the hem hemispheres of the brain. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, next we're going to use our chair or a block. So it, we're going to do a deep forward bend. So my version is going to be coming to the chair. I, I want to bring my crown of my head, so the very top of my head, onto the seat of the chair as I bend forward. So a wide stance with your feet parallel, you have to... Um, measure, you know, where do you need to stand to just allow the crown of your head to touch lightly on the seat of the chair? Or if you're super flexible, maybe you can come all the way down to a block. I'd have to be much, much, oh, I can't even make it. No. <laughs> too far, too far. So I've got my. Stance measured, I'm going to be able to bring the very top of my head to the crown of the chair. So lift upright once again and take a breath in, raise the arms, open the chest, and then very gently and slowly 
place your hands on the seat and lightly touch the crown of your head to the seat. And inhale, lift up again. We're going to add, add the mantra. Oh. Bend the knees as you open up again and inhale. Oh. Open up again, inhale. Oh. Take a few breaths. And then unwind. Come up to stand and shake loose with Kati Chakrasan. So in this practice today, the focus is all about the third eye and the crown of the head. So we're sort of blending the, the work, the, the asana practice for the sixth and the seventh chakras today. So next week we will move to the seventh chakra, but we'll have a little recap of um, each one so that we have a, um, a summary and a, and a, a reconnecting to each of the seven chakras in turn. So shall we do that again? A wide leg forward bend, bringing the crown of your head lightly to the seat of a chair or to a block if you can. So have you measured out your stance so you're close enough? Stand tall. Begin with your hands on your heart because basically, you know, we want to make sure that our heart energy is strong and we feel a strong sense of ourself. And inhale, open and look up. Oh. Bend and inhale, open. Oh. One more. Inhale, gather energy, gather life force from the universe and bring it to the crown of your head. Oh. And unwind, bring feet under the hips, take a little Kati Chakra sign. down onto the floor we'll take a little apanasana so lying flat on your back bring your knees up to your chest Hands over knees, fingers pointing towards the feet. Exhale, draw your knees in close. And inhale, knees travel out and away. Exhale, drawing in very close. Do a few movements like that. Aparnasana, good for the downward moving elimination energy. Exhaling, knees to chest. Inhaling, allow the feet to touch flat to the floor. And then take your arms out wider. We're going to allow the knees to rock from side to side like a little wash rag movement. So as you 
knees go to the right, your left palm turns up, head is looking left. And then when your knees go left, the right palm is turned up and face is looking right. So do that a few times. And they may, the knees may just move halfway to the floor or come all the way to the floor. It just depends on your body. And if you had a cushion or a bolster handy, you could allow your knees to just rest propped up so that they feel very well supported and comfortable. Let me see if I can give you a demo. So I've got my bolster here. My knees are dropping to the right onto the bolster while my head turns to the left. I'll stay for a few breaths. So a bolster or a cushion would serve that purpose very well. And then do the same on the other side. Drop the knees across. Slow your breathing down. Then I'm going to come to a seated position. Uh, I think I need to be sitting on something. I'm going to sit so my hips are higher. I'm going to sit on my bolster. So either blanket or cushion or bolster. Hands on the knees, sit up tall. And we're going to take a breath in and chant Om as we exhale, fold forward. So it'll be a gentle forward um, folding movement. Sit wherever you're comfortable, maybe on a chair. Take a breath in, stand up, sit up tall. Oh. Inhale, open up the spine again, lengthen the neck. Oh. And one more. Tall, open chest. Oh. Pause for a moment. Notice how you feel. And then release down onto your back. We'll do a little bridge work as a, a counter pose to the forward bend. Always nice to... Um, Change the sensation in your back with a counter pose. So lying flat, feet flat on the floor. We're going to raise the arms as we lift the hips. So feet lined up with your sit bones, arm by side. Inhale, gather up, pressing into your feet. Lift the arms overhead and then exhale gently, bring the hips back down and arms by your side. When you're ready, again, press into your feet, take the hips high and the arms float up over behind the head, 
and the buttocks and controlling that slow, steady return, hips down to the floor, arms by your side. Go again. Firm and lift. Arms float up behind. Stay there for a few breaths if you wish. It's always very much an invitation to work with your body the way it feels good. And then release the hips down, hug the knees into your chest. And then please roll yourself over. I'm going to do a little pranayama practice. So make yourself comfortable. Maybe your chair, on your cushion, wherever you'd like to sit comfortably. I shall come to my chair. So our pranayama practice is the subtle form of alternate nostril breaths, that is without using hands. So come to your upright chair, sitting just so that you're using your back muscles, not leaning into the back of the seat, preferably. So in alternate nostril breath, generally the practice, the traditional practice is to hold your hands so that you can close off one nostril. We start inhaling through the left side, exhaling through the right nostril, and then in through the right, out through the left. But we're going to use it just um, using our focus. So we're not going to call on the use of the hand at all. So this is like we bring all of our attention to the left nostril and visualize inhaling through that passage up towards this third eye center, and then visualize exhaling through the right side. So it may not be you know, 100% um, the exact airflow, but the visualization, the focus is, is following that pattern. So sitting upright, hands in a mudra with thumb and first finger touching. Settle in and make sure that your, your spine is quite erect. So as to allow free flow from the pelvic floor, that hollow tube that we're imagining through the center of the spine and breath and energy can flow readily. And then focus all of your attention on the left nostril and inhale following the movement up to the third eye. And then all of your attention on the right nostril, exhaling down and out of the right nostril. Then inhale in through the right side and let your awareness travel up to the third eye center and exhale down and out through the left side. So we're going to do that a few times. And it may be that your breath is a different pace to mine. So we're aiming for a smooth, slow breath. So go to that particular focus so that all of your attention is enveloped in the, in the subtle process. So inhaling left nostril, up to the third eye. Exhaling down the right side and inhale up through the right nostril and exhale from the third eye down and out through the left. Again, in through the left. Okay, following the side of a triangle up to the point, and then from that Agya Chakra down through the right nostril and in through the right side. 
up to the third eye center. Down and out through the left side. Continue the practice. A slow, smooth breath. Keep going while you listen to my voice. The development of the third eye center is all about increasing your awareness, increasing awareness of exactly what you're doing, increasing awareness of your thoughts, of how you feel. And the process of activating the third eye very much connects us with the possibility for intuition, for hearing the guidance that comes from within us, hearing the inner voice that suggests this is what we ought to do now. This is the best way forward. Don't go there. Choose this. The, the intuition is, you know, developed over our years of life experience you know, what works, what, what our values are, what, um, what decision would be right for us. And, you know, because in this modern world, we're so extroverted and, and swamped by information, very often we aren't still enough. We aren't quiet enough to hear the guidance that comes from our own heart or, or from our own um, wisdom. So third eye practices, Agya Chakra practices that activate this energy center, um, really develop us on another level where we are quiet enough to hear the, the guidance from the inner self that you know, understands what would be best. And then we can make those discerning choices. So it really, it's really important to allow the space, allow the time for quietness, for meditation, for just um, sitting and pondering instead of, you know, being sucked into the, the news cycle, being always, always enveloped in outside activity. So our third eye practice, let's leave the pranayam there. We did a few movements and brought our attention to Agya Chakra. And really, it's a lifelong process. It doesn't sort of um, clear and activate instantly. So make a commitment to take time, to allow time to practice this subtle form of alternate nostril breathing in particular. It's very good even to add the mantra. So mentally chanting om as you inhale up the left, mentally chanting om as you exhale down the right side and vice versa. So you're vibrating the, the energy center with the sound of the mantra. And the, these two practices together are very powerful for activating Agya Chakra. Let's move into Shavasana. So make yourself comfortable lying or sitting wherever you like to be. So spread yourself out on the floor with all of your favorite props. Head supported, 
you want your forehead a little higher than your chin. And today's where that means it's definitely cover up with a blanket time, I think. So you're lying symmetrically. Feel the support underneath you. And as you lie there, visualize a swirling beam of energy coming directly into the crown of your head. And the warmth and energy travels in at the crown and diffuses out through the pores of your skin. So as you inhale, visualize a swirling beam of energetic life force touching you lightly on the crown of the head and the warmth and energy diffusing out the head the neck down into the shoulders and chest so once again visualize from the universe colorful swirling energetic like a little tornado a very gentle loving life-giving tornado coming down into the crown of your head moving through the third eye center agya chakra down into the throat the heart the energy diffusing through your body And Agya Chakra, the symbolism is the bringing together of opposites, bringing together the seemingly opposing forces so that there's no longer any opposition, bringing together all of the processes in our body, the systems, our physiology, every cell. Just imagine all of your chakras, all of your cells singing together in harmony. So as you mentally chant OM on your exhale, let the vibration, the energy of the mantra energize every cell. So everything within you outside in your aura, vibrational forces singing together, chanting the sacred mantra OM. So mentally use that vibration of OM and send it around your whole body. Imagine it flowing into the joints, into the cells, the muscles of your upper body, and flowing down through your back, into the pelvis, hips, and legs, until every system every cell, every chakra singing together, clearing out any knots, any blockages, two sides of your body uniting Balancing, chanting on with the reverberating with the mantra.
ready make your breath a little stronger and take some movements ankles and wrists and turning your head from side to side And if you'd like to come up to sit, we bring your palms together and massage them warmly together. And then softly over your eyes. And then lightly massaging at that third eye center. So just two fingers between the eyebrows. And then drawing apart, just traveling along the eyebrows a little, very light touch. And circle around the temples. All these areas have many acupressure points. Now we're doing a little massage of the ears. So come to your ears and take hold of the top of your ear and pull it up and out. So a light tug, pulling up and out. Then move down to the middle of the cartilage and tugging outwards. So all of these points are connected to the vagus nerve, the one that is so significant in our um, relaxation. I'm going to just pull on the lobe now. So take hold of the lobe and pull downwards. A little sharp tug pulling down. And now we're going to massage all around the curly cartilage. So just index finger, not in the canal, but around the whirly worlds of cartilage in the upper part of your ear. So index finger just traveling around inside the little curly chambers there defined by the cartilage. And now actually in the canal, so you're not poking in hard, but sort of rotating the skin inside your ear canal. A little rotation. And then flick your fingers and just feel the sensations all around ears, eyes, third eye center. Close your eyes or softly drop them low. Bring your focus to Agya Chakra at the third eye, the, between the eyebrows. So we're guiding our focus to our sense of our higher self, our highest um, innermost awareness. And then bring your palms together, Om Shanti. And I'll read to you a poem by a Bengali poet from the 19th century. So you have to listen. This is quite um, symbolic. So you have to imagine a lake with lots of reeds and swans. Got that? A lake, lots of reeds, 
and lotus flowers and swans. Screening its face amongst lotus stalks, the golden bird contented, limbs listless with love, eyes open, sleeps on the flower with wa sha sa emblazoned on its petals. In a flower bu a bud reigns the mantra rung, repeat, rung, rung, and fan the flames red. Surround the swan with heat. Let no obstacle stand in your way. Get to work. You are young and fresh. Break this false sleep and snap out of your dreams. Then the storms of this world won't concern you. Oh, soul, whip up the wind. Let the bird fly, flower to flower, towards her mate in the Sahasrara. When that happens, the five elements in you, earth, water, fire, wind, and ether, will dissolve and you'll be free to merge in the supreme. So it's very symbolic and um, referring to the chakras. So the swan is um, sitting down low in the water, sleeping on the flower, which has four petals, which is the mulata chakra. And the flower bud above, which is saying rung, rung, that's the Manipur chakra mantra saying, get on with it, get going. Let no obstacle stand in your way. Get to work. You're young and fresh. Snap out of your dreams. And so the swan is being, you know, the, the person is being motivated to get to work on their spiritual progress and leave behind the concerns of the five elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and ether, and being free to focus the, on the spiritual upliftment of the upper chakras. So, wow, that's pretty um, symbolic. But our journey through the chakra, chakras has been about that, to get the basics right with our grounding energy, to find fluidity through the second chakra, and then our fire kicks in and motivates us to keep going. We find our heart, our sense of ourself, and gradually, gradually, our, um, we're, we're progressing with our more subtle forms of um, energy and concentration. So next week is our last in the, um, this little term, and we'll think about Sahasrara at the crown and do a little recap through each of the chakras. So I'll see you then. Om Shanti. Thank you for sharing the class. I'll close the recording and we can chat if you like.